Hello! I have a whole bunch of loose artworks that desperately need a home and so today I'm going to figure out a way to store my artwork so I can display it nicely but have it all together in some kind of order because at the moment it's such a mess. Let's get into it! Not only do I have this pile, which is just from this year, 2022, I have a whole bunch of art from previous years and I'm going to show you where I've got it all. So if I just swivel my camera around, I have this giant folio here that I've been storing all my artworks in by year. So I've got 21, 2020, and then anything prior to 2020, which is when I started my YouTube channel at the end of 2019. So I've got a whole bunch of old stuff in here too. It's all just sitting in here. Most of this stuff has not seen the light of day for years. And I think it would actually be nice to put it in a display situation where I can look at it. I do have a couple of pieces which are really big and are probably going to have to stay in the folio, but most of my other pieces are A3 size or smaller so I have come up with a solution and I will show you that now <laughs> let's just say I invested in some display books in various different sizes so there are heaps of folio options online there's quite a lot of different types of them on Amazon there's a particular brand from America they are called Dunwell art portfolios and one of my YouTube friends, Irene from Inkworks, did a whole video where she put all of her art into these wonderful folios, and this is where I got the idea from. So credits to her for that one. But I was looking at the Dunwell ones, and they are available in Australia, but they are also quite expensive, and it was going to take time for them to get here. I'm feeling impatient. I want to do this right now. So I looked around for an Australian solution, and I found these, which are by the company Jazz Art. This is an Australian art company and they are called Studio Display Books. These little ones are A5s, then we've got some A4s and A3s as well. They even have an A2 but that's just getting a bit too big and ridiculous so I decided to go with the maximum of A3. The A5 and A3s contain 20 extra clear pockets or 40 sides so you can put them in front and back. They're permanently bound they protect and clearly display content. They're acid-free, will not harm your valuable artwork, photographs or documents. This is why I picked these up. They also have durable thick polypropylene covers to prevent damage. And inside we have polypropylene sheets as well. So these are all wrapped in plastic. I'm going to have to open them all. There are two different kinds. There are also green ones, which are the Academy version. But they didn't look as sturdy as these ones so I think the studio version is better for my kind of art and I think it's a little more professional so I mean these are not the most expensive ones in the world but I do have a lot of art and I decided I just didn't want to spend hundreds of dollars so I've got for something which I think will be nice but not too expensive I really hope they're good because I've bought a whole bunch of them and I am now going to sit and sort them out. I'm probably going to do that off camera because it's just going to take forever. I completely forgot to mention that the A4 has 40 pockets, double the amount that the A5s and A3s have. So that's why I decided to get a couple of these. I actually ended up with three A3 books and that's because I bought these in Spotlight. But then I also found one at the art shop which was cheaper and I realise now that it's actually quite different. This one's called an A3 professional display book, not a studio display book. So I don't know if this is exactly the same. It might be another level up again, but there was only one of these and I just really wanted to have some more than that. So I've got three A3 books two A4s and four A5s. Hopefully that will be enough. I'm hoping that I have more than I actually need so that I can grow into them. So the good thing with these is that it has a pocket here that you can actually take this bit out and I could put my own little pictures or something in there to talk about what's in there. So I like that about them. I think those American ones are a lot sturdier than these. These are a little flimsy, but I just want to be able to display my pieces of artwork. And these are relatively thick. I have seen thicker ones before, but I've also seen some really flimsy thin ones as well. So this is kind of middle of the range. I think this will be suitable for my needs. So I guess I'm going to have to start filling stuff. I don't even know where to begin. 
Here we go. I've opened one of each size book and I'll keep the others in case I don't need them straight away. But as we can see, this one is an A5, so this one is going to fit perfectly, hopefully, in here. I'll put one in so we can see what it's like. I'll have to stick it in sideways, obviously, because it is a landscape one. But there we go, that looks good already. So I just need to do that about 9 billion more times and then we can fill all these books. <laughs> Well, it turns out I completely overestimated how many books I'd need because I'd managed to fit everything into these three books and I still have two A3s, one A4 and three A5 books. But you know if I'd only bought one of each then I would have needed more. So I'm not too worried. These will come in handy for the future so I'll just put them aside somewhere. But I've managed to get pretty much all of my art into these barring a few pieces like colouring in which I've got separate. I'll just move that lot out of the way. So I think the reason I overestimated is because I forgot that I'm working between three books of different sizes and of course my art is all different sizes. So I will have a little flip through and we can see how it's turned out. I'm actually pretty happy with it and I think maybe before I do that I might even make some little covers for this so I can slide them in because these aren't exactly the most exciting looking things in the world are they? <laughs> editing Becky here. I actually did fill a second A3 folio with all of my artworks prior to 2020 but I of course filmed none of that so I just thought I'd put this in for context because you will see another folio coming up very soon. Okay back to what I was talking about. Now I could have made individual artworks to insert into the books but then I decided that was entirely too much work and I am far too lazy so instead I have an A3 printer and all I did was come up with a little bit of a layout and I've changed the size of the fonts to suit the different styles of paper because I do actually have some A5 printing paper as well. I picked an artwork out of each book and this is what I've come up with. It's fairly basic but I think it's nice and neat and it looks pretty good. I've left the number empty here because I have not finished any of these books yet and I don't know if that's going to happen this year. I do hope it's going to happen this decade though. <laughs> and of course I've got one book which is different to all of the others. This professional display book does not have a cover on the front so I can't put anything on here unless I stick it down with tape and I thought that could get messy so for now I've just put a small sticker here. I decided to use this book which is the one that's different to all the others for my earlier artworks. I do have ones that are even earlier than this I think. I'm not sure where they are exactly. I still have quite a lot of sorting to do with all of my artworks. 2017 to 20 19 is when I had started to really take it seriously so I figured these are the ones that I want to keep and put in a display book. I stuck all sizes in here rather than using A5s and A4s I've just put everything in the one book. I think I might just do a little flip through so we can see what art I have in here. Not all of it is very good but I just pretty much try to keep everything that I make even if it sucks and you will probably recognize quite a lot of the pictures in these ones because many of these are in actual videos that I've done since I started YouTube which was right at the end of 2019 but really going from 2020 onwards. Apologies if there is some light reflection, that's the studio lights. If I turn them off it is quite dark in here so I figured I'd leave them on. I have pushed them back a bit so hopefully that light is diffused a bit. There's not much I can do about it because of course everything is in a plastic sheath now so there will be a bit of reflection. I'll do my best to reduce it as much as possible.
And here's all my art that you've never seen. I'll do some commentary for this one because these are much earlier works, although I really love this flower painting that I did. The hearts is actually an oil painting on canvas paper. I've got some fan art there from Game of Thrones, the hound, and then flipping over, I was quite obsessed with flowers for a long time, especially when I started out. Not much has changed, I still really like painting them. Some toadstools, and this is from a photograph I took in England when we were there in 2017. If I can get the right page here, here's another rose. I really like the background on that one. And then I have a mishmash of smaller pictures here, which I just put in the same page. Some colored pencil artworks. The right hand side are pictures from the colored pencil magazine challenges, as is ones on the left hand side. And then I did a couple of fan art versions for the band Ghost. They just released an album at that time, I think. I included all of my smaller pictures in this one big book rather than using multiple folios. I just figured it would be easier to put them all together and I used plain paper as backing just so it looks a bit nicer. I really like that rose in the bottom right hand corner. A whole bunch more flowers and if Irene is watching that one on the left is the one I said is the same as the picture that you drew recently from the photo off Pixabay. Flowers are such an easy subject to draw and paint, and we have a whole bunch more of them over here. I think the two on the right are supposed to be the same picture done in different ways, and the hydrangea on the left is from a photo I took. This picture of Uluru I also took that photo of, and I've done another painting later on in my sketchbook of it. More ghost fan art, the nameless ghoul masks that they had, and these are some pen sketches from The Hobbit that would be Thranduil, my favourite character more Ghost, and an Alice Cooper in there. I think I did that for Inktober one year. And now I've got some more colored pencil pieces. And the top right hand one here, I did not actually finish because I'd had enough of it. So I just cropped it down and showed half of the picture. The two pictures here are some of my very earliest colored pencil. I think that Cherries is the first one I ever really tried to do. A doodle design. And I think that's supposed to be Mr. Hyde. There was meant to be a Dr. Jekyll. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> and here I have some rather gormless looking tree pictures. I don't know what I was thinking when I was doing that. I do like the crystal though and I don't know where those hearts were. I just sort of chucked them in. I do like the one I did of the tram. That's a little painting that I used the Kurataki set with. And then other artworks in graphite pencil, watercolor, and the top one there is colored pencil. I'm getting down to really early color pencil pieces here. Those two on the left as well are some beginner ones. There's one on toned paper and I don't know what the woman is supposed to be. It was just something I copied, I think, from a book somewhere. I don't even remember. And then last, I've got some doodles here and galaxy number nine. I don't know why it is number nine at all. <laughs> I have a few pages left, so if I find some of the other pieces, I will put them in here as well. So that's pretty much all of my loose artwork that isn't in a sketchbook or hanging on a wall or that I've given away or sold. I really don't know what to do with it. I don't know should I try to sell some of the original pieces but at the same time it's very hard to let go of them because I like to have them in my collection so I could say this is my artwork that I have made over the course of my life. At least now they're in organized books and now I know exactly the time frame as to when I did all of these pieces as well and then I can move into the other books once I get further down the track and finish up these ones. I am feeling a lot better just for putting my artwork away and having it in an organized fashion. But at least now they're not just all over the place and loose and getting damaged. So this was a really great idea. I'm very glad I watched Irene's video because duh, it's such an obvious solution and I hadn't really thought of it. So thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that always helps my channel out and click that subscribe button if you've not already done so so you can see more of my videos in the future and also my whole back catalog because I have a lot of videos now. I will see you all again really soon in my next one and I hope you're having a fantastic day out there. I'll swatch you later. Bye!